Hi, this is Susie, and this is my part two of tips and tricks with the tools that you can use with Alcohol Ink. Make sure you watch the first one on how to move the ink. I showed you tools that are really interesting on how to move your ink, and we created this quick little picture, this scene that is turned out kind of nice, even though we didn't really plan it. It just turned out pretty good. Now, what I'd like to do is show you some tools that will remove the ink. So first one was to move it, now we're removing it. So the first one I'd like to show you is the simple household Q-tip. These Q-tips are fabulous. And when you use to put them into alcohol ink, dip them into alcohol ink, usually I dip it on the side of my paper towel, and then I can come in here and, and move something. Let's just say I wanted to start making some sort of a, a tree. I can start removing the ink, and when I, when I move the ink with my Q-tip, I dab it off over here on my paper towel. Now these will, you know, get dirty and nasty right away, so you'll probably have to switch the ends and, and use more. A lot of people use a lot of these. They're cheap. You don't need the expensive ones because sometimes they get even too fuzzy. We want something that doesn't get too much fuzz on the end where it starts being all stringy. So this is tip number one. The next one is these, uh, I have these wonderful Fantastics. They're F-A-N-T-A-S-T-I-X, and I'll put the link below as well where you can get these. They usually come in a pack of four. One is a tip that is more pointed, and this one is rounded. And they come white, but you can see I've got some residue left over from a project. These are completely filled with felt, and so when you dip them into your alcohol, you can clean it off usually get it a little cleaner. Once you get that slightly damp, then you can come in here and also use it to remove ink. They squeak. <laughs> I'll use this narrow fit, fit uh, felt tip and get some ink on there. And let's just do another branch this way. Now you have a little bit of control with these. But I like some other tools even better. I love this one, which is an art marker that has alcohol inside and you have a fine tip at one end and a broader tip at the other end. So when you twist the cap off, you're going to see the tips. There's the broad, here's the narrow. So this does the same thing, but I don't dip it into alcohol. It's already got the ink, uh, alcohol in there, so I can, take the tip and just remove the alcohol and then I usually dab it on my paper towel. Now I'm not being really careful, but here's the other, the broader tip. I want to clean this up a little bit. I can't. And bring this tree trunk down in here a little bit. It's okay to have shading in the trunk, different colors coming up. So these tools remove the ink really well. Another one is this alcoholic blending pen. If uh, this comes full with your alcoholic blending solution, and after a while it will be gone and evaporate. Um, one end is a, a fine tip nib pin. The other end is a little bit finer. So you got one that's a little thicker, finer. They're, they're both considered fine, but let's just try a little bit and see if there's any ink in, or alcohol in here. This is actually cleaning it up even better. This is nice. You can do fine lines. You can be very careful. I, I wanted to come over here and create a sun or, sorry, a moon. To me, this is more of a moon. You can remove the ink with this, which works really well. Sometimes I'll just take a Q-tip to do that, but you can do that as much as you need. Wipe it off, come back into it. Try your best to do a circle. <laughs> All right, so those are some great tips. I wanted to also show you a trick with this. On one end, there's a little metal clasp it's a little tiny metal clasp, and if you can get your fingernail or something underneath there, you can pull, you can pull it 
out and pour more fluid inside. Then put the nib back in carefully, push it down, grab it on both sides of the metal, push it down in there and you've got it all set again for the next round. Of, it will last a long time actually. All right, I also wanted to show you that if you're ever using masking fluid, masking fluid is something you put down first and then you uh, paint over it and then you peel off the masking fluid. It's almost like a gummy. Um, I always forget what it's like. Uh, the, the, what do you call it? That's that glue that we used to put down and it was all gunky and we peel it up. Um, so I bought these particular sculpting brushes. They're called sculpting brushes, but they're silicone. They're a rubber silicone. They clean up with just wiping off. You don't have to put them in water or anything. And I love using this fine tip one to use and dip into my masking fluid and, and draw on my paper first before I paint on it. This comes in a package. There's also a package like this one that came from uh, Amazon. And this one has some sculpting smaller ones as well as little dotted beaded items. So let's see if you can see that better. I'll put the links below, but these are really nice. I'll show you what I did with, with one of these. I took from this piece of artwork right here, what I did was I used this pointed silicone tip, dipped it in alcohol ink, and I started first started my painting by kind of drawing in the the trees. Wherever you're seeing white here is where I added the masking fluid, including the sun. Then I painted the painting, and when it was all dry, I peeled off the masking fluid, the glue sticky stuff, pulled it off after it was dry, and this is what it left. All the white area is where the masking fluid was. Now, if I wanted to, I could come back in and add some color within those trees, or I could just leave it like this. I thought this was a very unique piece, the way it looks with the white exposed tree and a little bit of, of ground covered and the moon. So here's, this is a batch of tools. In fact, one more picture I wanted to show you before we leave today is this one is different. I'm not really crazy about it, but I was trying something different. Uh, for the trees, I was wiping away the blue. All of this up in here was blue, just like the rest of this sky is blue. And I was removing the um, ink from the tree to make the trees. I was using it with this particular tool. And then, yes, that's the one I used. I used this one and I kept removing the ink and just kind of squiggling in some, that looks like branches. And then I also removed the ink for the tree trunk. And I didn't want to m remove all of the blue, so there's still a lot of blue left in it, but I could keep working on it and keep removing the blue if I would want it to. So I could keep working on it and just wipe it down on my paper towel and keep removing the, the ink. I hope this has been helpful for you. This particular tutorial was all about how to remove your ink. Remember on tile, tile is white, and if you remove the ink, it'll go back to white. Your UPO paper is white, and if you start with masking fluid or try and wipe it away, it goes back down to the white color. So this is all about removing ink, and I hope you enjoyed it. This is part two, so make sure you see part one on how to move the ink. This one's all about how to remove it. Thanks for liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel. It means a lot to me. I'd love to hear your feedback and comments as well. We'll do more. Give me an idea if you'd like to about what you'd like to learn and uh, we can all share ideas together in this alcohol ink journey, which I love a lot. <laughs> Bye now.